the time has come. All right, time for the boss of World Two. And here we have this pig thing. He's kind of the replacement for in Kirby's Dream Land One. There was La 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 and Lo Lo Lo. They were the uh, the boss of level two, and they had the the three doors they went through throughout the fight. He's kind of like that, only he's a bit more interesting. Instead of just pushing around blocks, he'll change floors, he'll turn around, shoot bombs, and he'll uh, summon his little friends, who also can be used as projectiles in case you don't have an ability when you get here. But uh, other than that, he's pretty simple. I actually don't remember his name. There's one of these kind of bosses in every Dreamland game of the series. Like, there's another one in Kirby's Dreamland 3. That's like a Tanuki, I think. Now it gets pretty difficult where we have to wait for one of his guys to show up and use them as an attack. Here we are. It's okay. Alright, one more hit I'll do. These guys don't give any ability, by the way. Hardly any enemies in boss fights usually do. But that is the end of the second world. I love how cool looks on the uh, warp star. Look at him. On to the next world, which is Ripple Field. And that is the last animal buddy. That is Kine. He is a fish who we go in the mouth of and we swim around. And he gives us better swimming controls, kind of. I would compare it to the frog suit in Super Mario, Super Mario Bros. 3, but uh, it's not necessarily that your swimming controls were like that in the first place, except in the first Dreamland game, but that's not how they are here. Actually, it might be best to just have the parasol alone, so that way it's standing above us. That's one disadvantage to having Ku's parasol, is that it doesn't stand above us like the, the normal parasol does. Also, the stone ability was back there. Although, I don't really use that one that much. Oh, I suppose this would be a good time to use it then. Oh, and I just died. I was gonna go back and make the stone enemy respawn so I could grab his ability. That's okay. Oh. I was about to say, Kirby was making it fine just walking past all of it. Alright, here's the stone ability, and they very much want you to use it here with this slope. There we are, much easier. Oh, and there's the star. Now we're underwater, and uh, the stone ability doesn't really do as much down here. Let's actually grab this uh, cutter ability right here. Same as before. Still get it from Sir Kibble. I don't know if we were able to use it underwater before, but certainly are now. In fact, can we inhale underwater in this game? I don't think we can. Usually underwater in this game I have the animal buddy, which is why I'm so unfamiliar with how the abilities and inhaling work underwater with just plain old Kirby. Oh, there's the end of the level when we didn't get him. I hope I didn't miss him. He could be in one of the other levels. Even though I'm pretty sure he was in... or the other animal buddies were in the first level of their world. I might be wrong about that, though. Oh, there was another one. Okay, that was just for a star. I do not remember this part of the level. Anyway, here we're introduced to these pipes that kind of blow us out of the way, which really reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh, okay, here we are. Here's where we get the, uh, the animal buddy. At first I thought we were underwater. Oh, I guess I can't inhale those. I can inhale that. Alright, one more should do. Ha! <laughs> This will also give us the spark ability for the first time in the game. 
Same as before. Not too much of a fan of it, but with the, the fish kind, it's a light bulb attack that fires a projectile. So it makes him invincible and you can shoot a, a light bulb. Also, Kain has the ability to swim against these uh, currents and get access to these stars and several other secrets, which will be how we get some of the rainbow drops later in the game. Although we're not getting there just yet. The nice thing about having the light bulb ability with Kain is it makes him completely invincible and he can still move in all directions. Although it seems his back isn't... or wasn't able to take that hit, I don't know what that was about. So maybe it doesn't make him completely invisible, but it certainly gives him a lot of protection. Also, in dark rooms like this, it lights up the room, which kind of acts like the light ability. Again, they remove some of the abilities and repurpose them with the animal buddies, using them as a kind of way to keep that ability in there without having to take up data, I guess? I don't know. That's just, that's how we find the secret door right there and get access to some more, uh, some more stars. Oh, I suppose I could have seen what... Is he back? Yeah, yeah, okay, let's see what, uh, let's see what the fish does with the cutter ability. Okay, that's right, he just shoots a, a wave. Kind of reminds me of the Echo the Dolphin, even though that didn't actually hurt anything. And the spike ability is pretty much useless with him. It just makes him invulnerable, which I guess can be useful if you're underwater and you want to just keep on uh, getting through a large wave of enemies, but most of the time you can just move or pass them or hit them with some other ability. But okay, let's head into World 3, or Level 3 of World 3. It is a bit awkward to use the fish on land. Oh, here's the parasol ability, which... Yep, it does exactly that. It just shoots the parasol out of his mouth. Some of Koo's are... Or, so, sorry, some of Kind's are just kind of underwhelming in that he just kind of spits out of the, the, the ability out of his mouth, and that's it. Like with the fire ability, I didn't show that off, but it's literally just a single fireball that he shoots, and that's it. And it's incredibly weak underwater, too. Oh, here we are. It's just a fireball. That's it. It's useful for taking these guys out, though. These guys are just hanging out in these pipes. They really remind me of piranha plants, or more so those snakes from Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. But this is an area where we really want the fish in order to just swim against the area, although that fire ability is not helping us out much. It's like Dan Sadukin, honestly. Anyway, through here is another dark room. It would have been helpful to have the, the light, I'm aware, but that's fine. It's just a bunch of stars. Here we are. So this whole area, I guess, was just for stars then. That's fine. You can inhale these guys. It's a little... I don't think they give us any ability, though, yeah. Oh, actually, what is the fish with the stone ability? Oh, look at his eyes! It's because that weight is inside his body, he's having to deal with it. But anyway, this area is just a giant current we have to make it through. much to say about this area, it's just a matter of dealing with the enemies and swimming through. It's not very difficult whether you have the fish or not, because if you don't have the fish, it's not like you're swimming against the current, so you can still make it through just fine. Stone ability seems to be helpful in dealing with these frogs. Oh, never mind. Maybe inhaling them is just better, or avoiding them completely. There we are. Oh, we were so close to finally getting the one up. Our life count is down there next to the Kirby icon. There's also a, a counter in which world we in and our points, of course. Uh, let's take care of this boss here. Oh yes, this is an underwater boss, making the fish very preferable. 
This is the anglerfish, who looks a lot like he's from Link's Awakening. I don't know which one came out first, they were both for the Game Boy. Also both a thing when the Super Nintendo was already out, in fact, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was already out by this point, I'm sure. But yeah, this guy's pretty easy, he just summons enemies and you just gotta throw the enemies back at him. You can't su or you can't shoot back his uh, arrow projectiles that he shoots, those just electrocute you. So keep away from those. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the digging boss from Kirby's Adventure, how it was going back and you had to attack it. 